Well, howdy everyone. Today I have a review of the first Tamron lens I've looked at in about 8 months, something I've been curious about for a long time. It's the newish Tamron 150-600mm f5-6.3 to VC USD. It's a very modern update to their older 200-500mm to lens, with a much longer focal range and new technology, such as an ultrasonic autofocus motor and image stabilisation. It caused some excitement when it came out last year, because not many zoom lenses go all the way to 600mm, and not many 600mm lenses are affordable. But this Tamron lens has been slowly coming down in price. It can be found for about 800 pounds or a thousand US dollars. It can be found for even less on eBay if you're wily and you know where to look. Obviously, the headline feature is that 150 to 600 mm zoom range, which is telephoto to the bone from start to finish. 600 mm is some serious reach, fantastically good for wildlife pictures and catching just about anything that happens to be far away. The lens only has a dark maximum aperture of f5 to 6.3, meaning that it doesn't let in much light at all. That makes it tricky to use in dark conditions, or for getting very fast shutter speeds. But I suppose that's the only way a lens like this could be affordable and reasonably sized. The lens is equipped with image stabilisation, what Tamron call VC. Here's some 600mm footage without stabilisation, and here it is turned on. As you can see, it does a pretty good job, and it works silently too. You still get a little shakiness, but we're talking about 600mm here, so that's pretty forgivable. It's a very important feature on such a telephoto instrument, and will enable you to get much smoother video and sharper pictures. Well, let's look at the lens's build quality. Tamron decided to keep the size and weight down as much as possible on this super telephoto lens. It doesn't exactly feel like it's carved out of stone, but for a plastic lens, it's actually built pretty well. Including the tripod mount, the lens weighs almost 2 kilos, or just over about 4 pounds. Obviously, it's pretty sizeable too, with a 95mm filter thread on the large front element, so any filters will cost you a lot of money. The front of the lens is trimmed with rubber, presumably to stop the whole thing cracking in two the moment you bump it against something. The rear element also has some weather sealing. The zoom ring turns a little heavily, but it's quite smooth and quite even. It turns a long way, and so you can't zoom in and out very quickly. My copy of the lens didn't suffer from any zoom creep, but there is a locking switch at 150mm, just in case the lens loosens up over time. The focus ring turns quite lightly and also quite smoothly. It only rotates about 110 degrees or so, so it's not the most precise. The USD autofocus motor is very quiet indeed. When you're zoomed out to 150mm, the autofocus works very quickly. The further you zoom in though, the slower the autofocus goes, in order to maintain accuracy. So here at 400mm the autofocus goes slower, and at 600mm it's pretty slow. The most important thing though is that it focuses accurately, which it does. Overall, it's all built very solidly, and the lens works pretty well. Ok, let's look at image quality. We'll start by testing it on a full frame camera, a 20 megapixel Canon 6D. At 150mm and f5, the lens is pretty sharp in the middle of the image with natural colours and good contrast. The good news is that the lens stays this sharp in the corners of the image too, with almost no chromatic aberration. Stop down to f8 for more brightness in those corners. Back in the middle of the image there's just a touch more sharpness, and this is about as sharp as the lens will get, at 150mm. At 300mm the maximum aperture darkens to f5.6. Again, it's pretty sharp in the middle of the image with good contrast, and the corners are also very good. There's a touch more sharpness and brightness in the corners when you stop the lens down to f8, and there's still no chromatic aberration. Back in the middle, the lens is very sharp. Again, that's another pretty sweet performance.
Let's zoom in again to 450mm, where the maximum aperture has darkened again to f6.3, quite a slow aperture. The lens remains nice and sharp in the middle of the image, which is great to see. Things are just a touch softer in the corners, and a little chromatic aberration is emerging on contrasting edges, but the picture quality is still quite convincing. The corners are a tiny bit sharper at f8, and a tiny bit sharper again at f11, and we also see more sharpness back in the middle, where we now see a very good show. Finally, let's go all the way to 600mm. At f6.3, the lens is finally a little softer in the middle of the image, with slightly weaker contrast. The picture quality is acceptable though. The corners of the image are a little softer again, and we see a touch more chromatic aberration here on those contrasting windowsill edges. Stop down to f8 for a little more sharpness and brightness in those corners, and back in the middle, the lens becomes quite sharp. Stop down to f11, and there's just a tiny touch more sharpness. So overall, on a full frame camera, the lens is good and sharp, putting in a very solid performance, although it never quite blows you away, like a more expensive lens might do. And at 600mm, you do need to stop the lens down a bit though, for best resolution. Ok, well, let's see how things look on an APS-C camera, in this case a 20 megapixel Canon 70D. At 150mm and f5, the lens is only averagely sharp in the middle of the image. The corners look a touch soft, with just a tiny bit of visible chromatic aberration. At f8, the corners look a little sharper, with more reasonable picture quality, and the middle of the image is a little sharper too. This is about as sharp as the lens gets at 150mm on APS-C. Well, let's zoom in to 300mm, where the maximum aperture is now f5.6, and the lens seems just a little sharper in the middle of the image, and the corners aren't so bad either. Stop down to f8, and the corners are a touch sharper, and the middle of the image is just a little better too. Not the best performance, but not bad either. At 450mm and f6.3, the lens isn't particularly sharp in the middle of the image, the corners are also a little soft, with a little visible colour fringing. Again, stop down to f8 for a bit more sharpness from the corners and back into the middle of the image, where sharpness levels are good enough. Finally, at 600mm and with the aperture open at f6.3, the lens is noticeably soft in the middle. The corners, again, are a touch softer. Stop the aperture down to f8, and there's a tiny bit more sharpness, but the image quality is still not impressive, although resolution in the middle of the picture is just about acceptable. So, on APS-C cameras, the Tamron 150-600 doesn't quite convince. When deprived of a full-frame sensor, the lens is a little soft, although if you stop down its aperture then you get OK sharpness levels. Alright, let's look at distortion and vignetting on a full-frame camera. At 150mm and f5, we get some pincushion distortion and noticeably dark corners. Stop the aperture down to f8 and those corners brighten up. Throughout the zoom range, that pincushion distortion remains. Here it is again at 600mm. At f6.3, we get slightly stronger vignetting, although stop down to f9 for more brightness in the corners. So, the lens is showing quite a typical amount of pincushion distortion and vignetting for its class. The minimum focus distance is about 2.5 meters, which is not very good, really. At f6.3, the close-up image quality is acceptably sharp, and it's a little better at f8, having a little more contrast. But still, this definitely isn't going to be confused for a macro lens. Let's look at flaring. Unsurprisingly, for a super telephoto lens packed with large glass elements, we get a lot of problems when bright lights come into the picture. You should definitely use the provided lens hood as often as possible. Finally, bokeh. As I mentioned earlier, the lens has quite a dark maximum aperture, so you can't really get the most out of focus backgrounds, even if you're using a full frame camera. Generally, the quality of those out-of-focus backgrounds is smooth, but patterns appear a little muddled up. 
There aren't any serious problems here though, especially when the backgrounds are quite deeply out of focus. Overall, this is quite an impressive lens for the money you pay. It's built nicely enough, and if you're using a full frame camera, then it's quite sharp, giving you impressive pictures and workability, getting you to 600mm very effectively. Owners of APS-C cameras will be less impressed, as the tiny pixels on their smaller camera sensors are a bit too much for this camera lens to cope with, presenting us with softer images. But there really are few other affordable 600mm options apart from this Tamron lens. For what it is, which is a good value super telephoto lens, it's very good indeed.